Hello and welcome to my retro watches and well I've got a retro watch in front of us today. This is a Seiko what we call the Pan Am. So this is a world timer, a digital watch originally created in 1977. This one has just come into me. I haven't even looked at the code so this one is uh, 1978. As you can see, it's not working. Came all the way from Japan. Now, as a Seiko collector like I am, and if you're a digital collector, this is one of those must-have watches. Uh, it's like one of those world first. I think it was the first one to do uh, world time, certainly from Seiko. Um, there's lots of other functions, like it's got the light, of course. And even with the world timer, it can actually um, keep the date and everything else. So as it's transitioning, so it's a proper GMT. I bought this a risk, to be honest. Bought it sight unseen and it was not working. No identification of whether a battery would fire it up. But to me, it looked clean, that screen. The glass doesn't look particularly scratched. And it is supposed to be this sort of a lemony color, uh, often referred to as a lemon face. And um, yeah, this watch was uh, sort of pilots liked it apparently because it was very easy to change your time zones and of course back in 1977 this was cutting edge technology so this for me is oh, I'm really excited because I've wanted one of these for a long time so long that even in this plastic bag here I've got another one that I bought years ago that was broken and I couldn't repair it and it's taken that long to find one at a cheap price because I'll only ever buy at the cheap, I won't buy at the top end. So uh, it could be that we just need to do a battery change, to be honest. So I'm going to flip it over, we're going to undo the case back. Now I've, I've literally just taken this out of the packet, got the camera out straight away. So I'm excited, uh, but equally I'm a little bit nervous. A good old British 20 pence piece in these seems to be a good coin to use. Just going to turn it. <laughs> there you go. That's got a battery in it. Has it leaked? I suppose that's the main thing. It, it doesn't look doesn't look bad in there at all, does it? Right. Okay. The battery. It says it's a three three ninety on there. Um, I don't think I've got a three ninety, but I have this chart from Cousins. Sorry, it doesn't come through on camera very well. Uh, but essentially, you're just going to find the battery size. Something like this. So there's 390. So it's a 393.89. So let me see what I've got. And here we go. have got a 389. Renata. I know some people don't like the Renatas. They say they're terrible, but I don't have a problem. All right, let's get the case back. Not the case back, the whatever you call it, the battery hatch back on okay <laughs> oh oh well it is working look sorry about the dazzle from my light it is working but it is really faded now that is a little bit of a worry because faded usually I mean I'm not in a electronics expert by any means but it could mean well it could be a dodgy battery connection but it equally could be a capacitor issue uh, one thing to note with this watch it was told to me at the time is the pushers are almost solid God, that's terrible isn't it how faint it's really good from this angle look but dead on it's not so good and the lights on too look that's interesting i think the lights I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think it's controlled by, you have a conventional crown here that pulls out look, for your set, oh, for your setting mode. There we go. So that kind of works. So I know some of you now will be going, oh, I'll get a polarizing filter. That will do. But no, it should, it should be better than that. So it gives us something to work with. The video is not over yet. I'm going to get the module out and we'll have a closer inspection, probably take it apart. The joy is, is that my donor, um, let's bring in the donor. So the donor's in worse condition and I have messed around with it inside. But from memory, the, sc well, the screen doesn't work very well on this, but I'm going to see if it's a little bit brighter. 
So I'll just take the battery out of this one. Yeah, so you can see on this one what it does. It's the screen has completely gone wrong. But that certainly does look brighter, doesn't it? It looks the same on all angles. So we could possibly use the module from this one. So let's strip this one down and have a closer look. Well, I've just tried to take the uh, spring bars out and they are completely solid as a rock. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit difficult because I do need to clean that bracelet. But to get the case out, there's a little thing here. I've just loosened it a little bit, a little slot. And that should just pull up along with everything else. There we go. There's a little bit of dirt in there, but that's fine. And then that's what we are confronted with. And interestingly, we've got some rust, we've got some rusty screws. Let's get a little bit closer as we uh, disassemble this little module. It's interesting why those screws have gone rusty. I'm trying to identify also why the pushes are so bad, but they look absolutely grimed up. So let's uh, try and disassemble it as best we can. It'll be a little bit tense with rusty screws because you never know if they're going to snap. Oh, and I've just thought as well I need to get the the stem out and I remember the stems come out on this as normal but actually I think I'll take these screws out first get the screen off then worry about that the screen is the most important part now the scary bit is seeing how the screen comes off Because I dare say it's been on there since 1978. So I'm just going around and just trying to loosen it a little with my screwdriver. And I've also noticed, you guys may have noticed, that a bit of the plastic here has broken. I'm hoping that that's okay. I'm now actually debating whether that was missing because I can't see it on the parts on my bench here. So maybe it has been a part. Maybe that's causing a problem. Maybe it doesn't matter because we've got the donor. I've always got to bear that in mind. still got it's what they call the zebra strips that take the current from the board onto the screen to make it work and there's obviously a bit of debris and dust and things so we'll keep that safe and now a bit more confident about working on the module I can't get my head over that bit of broken plastic though My word, it's been a while since I've seen this. I'm thinking this is just plastic here. And not actually a break to, yeah. That's just a bit of plastic, it's not actually on the copper bit. Right, so if I pull the crown, I'll keep the crown in, I can just see it there, that crown release. This whole bit's broken, isn't it? I wonder, I wonder if that's causing the problem. Yeah. Now that's very stiff, can't really do it easily on camera. Oh, it doesn't want to come out. Right, bear with me. 
and there's the little offending crown and you can see that it looks bent to me and that wasn't through my force so this donut might be um, really really beneficial right now and there's the back of the module a bit more rust seems to be rust everywhere look mm. it's a bit worrying I'm going to turn my attention to this part because this bit of plastic here should be all one piece and it's broken over here as well. And it's broken in more than one place. And now we can see the pushers, no wonder they don't work. So the pushers are held in by one of those E clips. And I'm having to try and use the microscope here to see what I'm doing. I don't know if I can force it off. I need to push it in now. Push it in. Wow, that is absolutely solid. At least I think that's all of it. So it's going to need a lot of, a hell of a lot of cleaning. Now we'll just try and target the other one. Sorry about the dazzle. There's a big part of me right now that just wants to strip the donut enough to put the screen on and put the battery in. Because so far what we're seeing on here is a lot of damage, aren't we? So looking at the... Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm going to try that to start with. Well, here's the screen in the donut and it looks just as bad, to be honest. So... A bit disappointing. Could be that the screen isn't as good. It actually does look better. It doesn't on camera, I don't think, but it does look better to me. So I think I'm either not going to be able to fix it still, because I won't know which capacitor it is necessarily, or even how to change it. So I think we'll just get the module, strip it all down, give it a really good clean, first of all. This is the original one, and see how we go from there. a bit curious as to what that is and it's on the board yeah so that's just there deliberately isn't it so these are the contacts here so they could have a good clean certainly down there that can't be helping all those little bits of debris and it looks like we've got some capacitors or something under there this will be the ICU. Uh, a couple of screws, three screws. Am I missing something there? I see. 
kind of wants to come off with that plate. main plate looks quite tarnished but let's flip it over and see what we can strip off the next side this screw is becoming a bit of a challenge Okay, what lies underneath this piece if it comes up? <laughs> Look at that! Look at that for a blooming circuit, that's amazing! I cannot comprehend what they all do, and it looks particularly complex. Just curious to know what else can actually be stripped off it. There's a whole bunch of screws here. That is the um, well, regulator, for want of a better word, the trimmer. There's a screw there as well. Obviously, I don't want to touch any of this. <laughs> yeah, that is that is quite something, isn't it? That's the uh, bulb for the light. So I'm screwing that one. I don't actually know what it does. So I'm curious as to whether I can remove this off the main plate. But I'm not too sure. Seemingly it looks like it will come up. I think that's just sprung out. So there we go. So the board comes out nice and easy. And then that leaves us with, I guess, a keyless works of some sort and the battery connectors. So we're getting to a position now where I can just do some cleaning and um, and then reassemble first of all see if it fixes anything I really don't think it will I think it's still going to be as dull as it was before but then I don't know let's remain optimistic so what I sort of forgot about here is the pushers so this is clamped in at the moment but they're quite rusty but you can see how everything's operated here so we're definitely going to need to strip this down just trying to make a note of the parts because that would all need greasing and oiling and at this point it would be good if I used the right size screwdriver so this is a long spring goes all the way down to here So part of all of that setup. So how the heck do you take that apart safely? That's under load there, I think. Yeah, that's good. Literally about to fly off, I think. I 
I've got it. Whether I can fit it back on again is another matter. And sorry for the dazzle. Same thing, this little gold part up to a very long spring. Don't want to do much with that part because it's pointing in one direction and that's where I need to keep it. I think that's all part of the board, yes it is. Okay, now we're about as clear as we're ever going to be. So I'll put some of these in the watch cleaner and the rest are going in alcohol for a wash in the ultrasonic. Okay, all the parts are cleaned and I'm just going to test this capacitor here and check it with the other one. I think this is microfarads, correct me if I'm wrong. And we're getting what, 35. Don't know whether that's correct or not. Just trying to see if there's a difference between the two boards. So here's the, the one from the donor if you like. It's a little bit higher but it's probably within the range I would have thought. And there was that one other capacitor on the board as well so let's test that cap is here and it's in position so i don't know whether it's supposed to be on the board to test it or not so i saw seven but i don't know if that's right let's run with seven for a minute that is the board from the watch and the donor one is here i haven't stripped it all the way down as you can see but well, that one came up eight so I would say, well, they're both the same, aren't they? So possibly not a capacitor issue, which is a good sign. Let's crack on and rebuild it. So this is the pusher bit, and I've just cleaned the end there to get rid of most of the rust. Need to put some grease in there and I'll grease this one first, so for the next side. A little bit of D5. As that loops around like that. Now we've got to attempt the other side. OK. 
Okay, I did forget to put a grease, bit of a grease behind here, but I'll put the covers on first. I've got the set in lever spring bolts of things. And there you can see how they operate or oh, don't. There's a little bit of rust on the top of here. I couldn't really sand that off without damaging. I was, was worried about damage. The crown should be okay. I'm not going to fit it just yet. Okay, let's uh, get the circuit on the go now. We've got the uh, lamp or the light, which is a little tricky to place. But with a bit of persuasion, we should get there. And my tweezers have got stuck, look. <laughs> There we go, it's balancing. Let's get the screws in. And the guard for the, I think this is the quartz, the crystal. beauty of digital watches is they don't take much to rebuild. I'm still amazed by the architecture of this circuit. It's great isn't it? It's not like it's you know fiber board or a ceramic board. It's just plastic and uh, copper or, or metal. And now I've just done that I've just noticed there's another little capacitor there that I completely missed. Oh I think at the moment I'm just going to take a risk and rebuild it and see if we've made any difference or not. Okay, that's that side. Now we're on the other side. Build this one up. Just a note. You might have noticed the last few shots on the looking down view is a bit clearer than it was in the disassembly and that's because I've been using two separate microscopes. I've got another one in, somebody sent for uh, an appraisal if you like and um, I'm already seeing a big difference between the first one and the original one I've been using, the Link Micro. The Link Micro certainly seems a lot better for a hobby. So hopefully it didn't spoil your enjoyment too much because I am conscious of that. And that, my friends, is not what you want to do. <laughs> so this is the surround from the donor. It's a little bit more complete. Still struggling with it though. That's on enough. In with the reflector. And now the zebra strips. And I've cleaned these just by 
dipping them in alcohol and giving them a good wipe. They can get greasy and they can be quite awkward to get in the slot by the looks of things. Excuse my finger here. There's one. We're getting very close now. And here's the screen. I don't like the way this thing keeps hanging out. So with the screen, I haven't cleaned it particularly. I've cleaned where the contacts would be. Just use a Q-tip, bit of alcohol, just to be sure. This watch has had some water ingress at some point and it's also had a battery leakage. That's what I've seen. You can see these little white flecks here, for instance, that's part of battery that hasn't cleaned up. It's time for the clamps. And then, um, for whatever reason, that one doesn't want to sit. Now the whole thing's moved, everything's moved, look. Broken there as well. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's finally clicked into place. Now I'm going to put the screws in, but not very heavy. Keep them quite light until we get the other side in. Screens on these are probably really rare to find, and anything this old deserves a bit of respect even if it's technology rather than um, mechanical all right let's just try get the other one on see if that's the same sort of fight or not four screws are in don't like the way this bit of plastic hangs out here but I can just nip these up and it's almost time for moment of truth stand by so here we go I'm going to just put a battery on here and try to rest the module. Oh, and there we go. So on the camera, it looks, it still looks faded. I hope it's remarkably better than it was. So I think I'll just rebuild the whole thing first of all. Let's see if it still runs and that everything else is displaying because I can't do much until the crown's in and the pushes. Um, yeah, maybe the fault lies with the screen. Maybe the screens just get old and they get faded, perhaps. I don't know. I mean, that is just about legible. And honestly, it is better. I think if I try and... Oh, I can't show you on an angle. It doesn't make any difference particularly. But it's a lot darker. So that's positive, definitely. Right, case it up. Got one of the pushers here. Just trying to put a bit of Seiko silicon grease. Stuff is horrible. Gasket's gone quite hard. Can't change it. Uh, I don't know what the size is or how to get one. So I've just sanded it a little bit and uh, I then put a load of this grease all over it. 
that should, if we bring in the case, make it slide in and out of here. Yeah, as you can see, it's a lot better now. Uh, there is still some tarnish. That's the rust. As you can see, water ingress got in. Made quite a meal of everything in here. So we just put the Eclipse back on. And uh, I've done that one already. It just feels still a little bit stiff, actually. There we go, all done. Top pusher appears to be a little bit stiff. Oh no, there we go, that's fine now, brilliant. Here's the inside of the case. I've done my best. I know it looks terrible still, but that's the best I can do. I can't put it through the ultrasonic because I can't risk moving the glass and try and get that inlay because there's a good chance the glass will break. There is a little bit of debris it's got in, uh, but I think my uh, puffer will blow that out. Uh, at the moment, I just want to case it up and see what it looks like. So, a uh, couple of parts. There was this part that I didn't take out in the video because I didn't realise it came out. It's just like a little holder thing. So you can get that in, get that lined up. And what went in between that was a gasket. And the gasket I managed to save and I've had it soaking in my gasket grease for a few days to sort of supple up. So I was going to pop that in. Hope that is sufficient. Doesn't always work this, but uh, sometimes. There we go, fits in there quite nicely. So I'll just marry the two pieces up and we're kind of done. So here is the watch and I think the screen is a lot better. Now I've been wearing it for a couple of days and it has got progressively better. Uh, there is, as you can see, just a little bit of sort of browning there. And we have the date digit here. That should be the first, it's Friday the 1st of March. And I'm in my garage, it's really cold. And when this watch gets cold, it loses a segment over here. So let me just try and zoom in actually. There we go. So it will come back. I can fiddle with that a little bit more, but I'm really, really pleased. I can clearly read the time. I am gonna get a bit of um, polarizing film just to see if it makes any, well, makes it a little bit better, but I don't wanna lose that lemon face. So let's just try and go through some of the settings. So um, at the moment it's set, it's actually set to GMT. I'm obviously in the UK. Uh, if I press this button as a rule, it then will always show the GMT time. So in theory, you can track three time zones. You can set one for one function, one for another, and then it will always show you GMT as well. Um, if I push in this crown here, we are getting Los Angeles time. Now I've got family in Los Angeles, hence the reason I've set it there. And at the moment it is basically 13.36 or 1.36 p.m. in the afternoon. It'll stay on this setting the whole time until I push the crown again. And then on the bottom here, we have the light as you can just see. I don't know if I can 
I haven't got enough darkness to show you the light. It is a typical 70s digital watch light. It doesn't really do too much. So you have all these 29 uh, time zones that you can set uh, to your heart's content. I'm not going to mess it around. I've only just got used to trying to figure out how to set it. It took me ages to figure out the button configurations and so on and so forth. But I certainly feel it's a win. So now I'm going to test the accuracy on something uh, that you've never seen before. So we'll take a look at this. This is my new secret weapon. It is a Seiko Quartz Tester QT99. I'm not sure if it's 70s or 80s. Probably 70s actually, given the fact that the watches that were tested were in the 70s. It is straight out of James Bond or science fiction with these big clunky buttons that you have that are really reassuring and a few dials and switches there as well. But the principle of this machine is to test uh, the quartz crystals on digital watches, on quartz analog watches. It says here it can do LED, but I've not figured out how to do that yet. In theory, it'll do a mechanical watch, but you need a different interface apparently, which I haven't got. So it's all about this little stand here that plugs in. Uh, so we're going to test the accuracy of the Pan Am. So here is the Pan Am. All I'm going to do quite literally is put it on here and the input light lights up so it can read it and then you wait a few seconds, 10 seconds I think or thereabouts and it will start giving us a reading. Now at the moment it's giving us zero. That is not going to be true at all. It'll just take a few more moments to pick it up. And there we go, we're at minus 0.17 seconds a day, which is absolutely staggering when you're coming from a mechanical world. This thing has got some sort of oven in here, it gets warm, and I don't understand how it works at all. I'm hoping some of you guys in the comments might be able to tell me. Um, so the watch is also affected by temperature. Now I am in my garage, it is about 11 degrees Celsius, so it is quite cold. As a rule, a watch should be warm off your wrist, and I do believe you get different readings. I mean, to be fairness, Seiko did make the dual quartz movement, which was thermal compensation uh, for that very reason, to keep the accuracy as much as possible, depending on the temperature of the watch. So here we are. We are now settling at, say, let's say 0.2 uh, seconds a day. So we're around about, what, six maybe seven seconds, minus seven seconds a month. <laughs> That's truly, truly remarkable from a watch that is from 1978 in what is pretty much new technology at the time. Now I will be doing a video on this machine in more detail. I need to learn a little bit more about it. The whole idea really is to take a quartz watch and to try and regulate it and fine tune it and get it as accurate as we possibly can because I think that can be done. I'm going to bring in yet another Seiko, why not? It's a re re recent acquisition for me. This is a Seiko uh, QT again from the 70s. Beautiful things. Uh, it's got a lovely mechanical quartz movement inside this. So I'm going to test it. I'm going to show you what I do. So first of all we'll take off the digital watch. I then have to click this little button down here and then we turn it to step because it has what's called a stepping rotor which is a little magnetic uh, rotor that well it just is all to do with the coil and everything else I'll go into that in a better video later on how a quartz watch works and then we're going to put that on there and now we see it pulse so we've got this set to 10 so it'll do 10 seconds before it gives us a reading and there we go it's come up already this one's almost the polar opposite of the other one, isn't it? So we're running at 0.38 seconds a day. Oh, now it's dropped 0.27 seconds a day. So again, roughly this one's running at plus seven seconds a month, isn't it? There or thereabouts. Really, really super impressive. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this for the very first time. I think to end the video, I'll give you some moody shots of the watch all looking uh, nice and fresh from the bench. So here it is on my seven inch wrist and I managed to free up the spring bars in the end to give the bracelet a good clean. It's a beautiful bracelet, fits really nicely. The watch is great sizing as well. It's 10 mil thick or just underneath, 37 mil across 
and the lug to lug is only 41 millimeters now i just love this watch just look at it i'm so pleased to get it in my collection at last because i am a bit of a dog with a bone after buying that one i think in 2018-19 which was the donut and i couldn't fix it then um i just can't let go and uh, finally to get one these tend to go for a lot more money more than twice what i've paid for it when they're working so i feel quite lucky and i'm happy to add this one to my collection it's the first lemon face seiko digital watch i've managed to get hold of there's another one which is uh, still on the radar but equally as expensive i don't really collect digital watches anymore um, but i have got a heck of a lot of them and there's a few still key ones that i want to get i will contemplate doing a video on the uh, digital watch collection if any of you guys would like to see that equally uh, leave me a comment below if you've enjoyed this video and if you want to see a video particularly on that seiko quartz tester as well i'm all ears on that one so if you comment below i do read every one and i do try to reply to as many as i can believe it or not this watch was i can't say faked but back in the day uh, people copied that design and i've actually got one called a supersonic which i'll put a photo up now it is still somewhere in the midst of my collection but i don't really know where it is anymore so yes um that is about the end of this video i've got plenty more coming i've got two videos in production at the moment they're both disassembled i've just got to rebuild them but unfortunately i've had some personal circumstances that have been delaying me uh recently taking all my focus away and quite rightly so i'll keep that private for the time being um i was on the television recently uh on would i lie to you in here in the uk here it's one of being one of my biggest secrets i knew since my recovery from cancer in 2022 when i was first contacted and um, yes it is true i was on the program and i was uh, lee max apprentice lee mac is a comedian in the uk uh, who has actually been watching my channel would you believe this is michael he is a master watchmaker and i am his apprentice <laughs> I will leave a link to the BBC iPlayer down below for anybody in the UK. This is series 17. It is episode 9. It was episode 5, but that's another story. Uh, if you are overseas, you might be able to tune in using a VPN. I do believe there are copies flying around on YouTube, but I've not found them personally myself. But go and have a look by all means uh, so that is it that's the end of the video i hope you've enjoyed it leave your comments below i read every one i will reply to as many as i can i'm really interested to know what you've got to say either about lee mac the quartz testing machine or the pan am watch of course did you enjoy this type of video um uh, hit the like button if you've enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and i will see you very soon in the next video so bye for now